Hello, welcome to my second video. Uh, this will be a lovely winter lookbook for you all, so let's get right to it. So for my first look, I wanted to keep it nice and clean. I live by a few rules in the winter, and that is one, use natural fibers as often as possible, such as wool, cashmere, silk, or anything that will actually keep you warm. Number two, be comfortable while looking and feeling good. And number three, try to use at least a little bit of color. So for this look, I'm wearing a secondhand fitted wool plaid coat with a rabbit fur collar from Philip Lim with mostly different shades of gray, but also a few pops of red, which I wanted to match with the rust color of these pants that I found at a Nordstrom rack a while back. I'm pairing them with these dark red loafers from Balenciaga and a wool Steve Jobs-esque mock neck that I got at a Goodwill here in Chicago. I added a little gold necklace to match the gold detail in the shoes, and I think the simple color combos and fits of all the pieces just act really cohesively and would look great on anyone. Taking hints from that outfit, I thought that a really easy and overlooked way to create fun yet comfortable and warm outfits in the winter is to use some statement pants. I think men often overlook the ability of pants to define and accentuate an outfit, and we usually see a lot of denim or cargo pants or sweatpants, which usually aren't too inspiring. These are women's 1990s era McQueen wool side pleated pants with absolutely gorgeous movement, and I paired it with a cashmere v-neck and a cropped 2005 jacket from Victor and Rolf that I could not seem to put on. Um, I will always promote everyone shopping in whatever department they want, so just buy clothing that looks good on you. Also, I'm adding in this video the brand, price, and location that I bought each of these items at to make everything more transparent for y'all. As you can see, I bought almost everything in this video and everything in this specific outfit secondhand, which decreases your carbon footprint and increases the amount of money remaining in your bank account. For the making of the fit, when wearing high-waisted pants, I think it looks phenomenal to use cropped top pieces because when the two meet at your waist, you just look so put together. And I added this orange sweater to bring a pop of color to a normally dark look to combat that good, good seasonal depression. Now, look at this movement on these pants. I am in love. So, these are another one of my favorite statement pants from Roberto Cavalli. They are flared, they are a beautiful dark red color, and they are a soft velvet so I can feel up my legs while I'm shopping at Target. And for the top half, I wanted to look like that vaguely cool humanities TA that gave terrible feedback on your freshman year essays, so naturally I put a nice collared shirt under an oversized kind of poofy sleeved v-neck alpaca sweater from Paul Stewart, and added a leather sleeved varsity jacket for that full scholarly, not trying too hard, but definitely trying too hard aesthetic. And to show you the flair of the pants, I decided to show you my balancing prowess, but it turns out I haven't improved my ability to stand on one foot since the third grade. Thumbs up! This fit was inspired by interns at law offices who sit around and don't really do anything because their dad is partner, but they also have that kind of soft boy cozy aesthetic to them. And for these reasons, I put some tight-fitting wide-legged wool checked pants from Cavalli again, with the same collared shirt under a gray mohair varsity type sweater from Marc Jacobs. One of my favorite details is the little yellow lines on the neck to add a touch of spice. Additionally, something that is easier to play with in the colder months with more layers is texture. Many natural fibers can be super soft and straight and woven, or they can be left in a very pilled up manner to create exciting texture that you normally can't get with cotton or warm weather fabrics. Mohair is a great fabric for that effect, and this sweater itself is super fuzzy to add an exciting element to a normally plain look. I paired everything with simple, cheap black oxfords, and that's it. As you'll see from the beginning of this clip, another easy way to stay super warm while also keeping your favorite denim or other non-insulating fabrics in rotation is to add some long underwear. I use a 100% silk pair from L.L. Bean, and they slide under anything unnoticed. And from statement pants, I want to roll over into statement coats. A statement coat for me is anything that has an interesting color, texture, cut, or unique details. This one I thrifted in the women's section at Village Discount in Worker Park in Chicago, and it is 100% wool and was actually made in Italy. Although sometimes difficult to button, it has a very handmaid's tail cut, which you normally wouldn't be able to find in the men's department. And I draped it over a nice cable knitted wool cashmere sweater from Vince, and I put on my trusty Doc Martens to add a little bit of an edge. This next coat that I'm about to put on is from one of my favorite designers, J.W. Anderson, and his fall-winter 2016 runway show. At first, it looks like a pretty basic yet well-constructed camel coat, but there are these metallic spikes on the pointed collar that add such a fun twist to a classic. I also have on these silk Lanvin pants that clearly don't have pockets, a cashmere cable knit from Polo Ralph Lauren, and a good old pair of black leather Chelsea boots. As you'll now see while I twirl like a figurine, the coat has a unique column-like shape to it, and it includes these great pointed curve details throughout on the front pockets and breast area. This is what I would describe as my Inspector Gadget meets Timothy Chalamet on a casual day off outfit. 
And as I get closer to the camera, you can see the intricate details of the collar that mix with the rest of the neat and wonderfully constructed coat. And I think everyone should have or even create something fun yet wearable like this in their winter wardrobe. As I said before, a bit of color is always important to add some excitement and energy to our secluded winter lives, and this red coat from Mark by Mark Jacobs is perfect for me. I know I'm showing a lot of designer pieces, and because they are secondhand, they are often ones that are not easy to find or readily available to you all. So for this outfit and any outfit that I show, I only serve to give you all some inspiration or creative ideas to dress and have fun while it's freezing outside. To that effect, any bright or different colored coat that you can mix into your wardrobe is a lovely addition. The lavender merino wool sweater adds some much needed calm vibes, and these cozy pants and loafers only serve to present the coat thoughtfully. I think the slightly oversized nature of the coat actually goes well with the super wide legs of the pants, and it makes a fun pyramid-like shape. Shockingly, these women's pants have pockets, and you'll see when I come closer, the texture of the coat provides a nice contrast with the smooth color blocking of the rest of the outfit. For my final statement coat outfit, I'm turning to some sharp tailoring. This wool, polyamide, and silk long coat from L'Enfant's 2011 Fall Winter Collection is probably one of my favorite pieces that I own. The outfit gives me super steampunky London aesthetics, and it makes me feel like I'm missing a boiler hat. For any tailored coat, a useful tool is to button your shirt underneath all the way up and actually leave out a tie or bow tie. For me, it creates a taller shape, and it also forces me to stand straight, or else the collar would start choking me. As I check myself out in the $7 Target mirror behind me to make sure I'm not making a fool of myself, I want to add that any clean pants and shoes would go with a tailored coat like these Yves Saint Laurent tuxedo pants and black Chelsea boots, and you could even add a blazer underneath as long as it doesn't clash. When shopping for a statement coat, always look at the details and the stitching and the fit and make sure that the colors and textures as well would work with other items in your closet. However boring, I think it's most important to shop for basics first and then ball out on an exciting, extravagant item when you know you'd rock it. In a shocking turn of events, I'm going to switch the focus to your favorite sweaters. Everyone knows that a good sweater is a winter essential, so I wanted to provide some fits that take them up a level. This Dior sweater that I'm wearing was a recent summer purchase for insanely cheap, and I'd actually recommend that you all shop for your winter goods in the spring and summer when they go on sale new, or when less people are shopping for them secondhand, so that you can get these phenomenal deals. I've teamed this blindingly hot pink sweater with thick leather pants, which combines textures and colors in a normal feminine and masculine dichotomy. On top, I've put my black pea coat from Dries van Noten, and I added spiked platform creepers from a Jean-Baptiste Valley H&M collab. The shoulder details on the sweater also add a little something extra to an already fun outfit, and I don't know what my obsession with leaning back is, but you should know that I'm currently looking into a mirror on my desk. Next up, chonky wool sweaters are a winter favorite. This sweater extremely exaggerates those cozy, extra long sleeve vibes for when you want to cuddle up and drink hot chocolate and watch movies in the winter. And since it's insane, I've put it with an edgier biker vibe with Docs and this Kupel's leather jacket and tighter Acne Studios jeans. The Victor and Rolf sweater provides soft color but loud shape to the look. A general important note is to not add too many statements to an outfit. I don't have outfit formulas per se, but if you're going to make a big statement with anything in your outfit, definitely make sure that the rest of the clothes will elevate and bring focus to that one statement rather than draw attention away from it. For our final round of fits, I wanted to start with the No Thoughts Head Empty outfit, all black. If you're feeling lazy, but you still wanna go outside and be that guy in CVS, wearing all black is definitely the way to go. This combo should be a staple in anyone's subconscious outfit catalog that they simultaneously create while overthinking social scenarios right before they fall asleep, because that happens to everyone. And personally, to keep it sleek, I go for tailored pieces and pants with sharp pleats, but really when it comes to all black, it's hard to go wrong. Here I am reusing a bunch of clothing from other outfits, including the mock neck sweater, Dree's peacoat, YSL tuxedo pants with a satin stripe, and Chelsea boots. To upgrade further, perhaps a black scarf or black bag could top the whole thing off. Another way to pull off the monochromatic look is using shades of brown. This is super easy, but it looks like you put effort into it and actually slept last night. The whole thing doesn't just have to be brown though, so you can mix with black shoes or accessories like these docks, or gloves for when your fingers start to feel like they're going to fall off. Some people really hate brown tones, but I think it's definitely coming back into fashion now. 
So try to play with different shades of brown or really any other color when you do a monochromatic look. I chose brown because it provides a super warm and welcoming look in the winter, and I just happen to have a bunch in my closet. I'm wearing a Theory Merino wool waffle knit sweater, a wool double-breasted overcoat from the Couples, and brown J. Crew pants that I got for basically nothing because they're going out of business. One thing everyone loves in the winter is layering. These next two fits are for when it's freezing outside, but you're coming in and out of ridiculously overheated classrooms or offices, if we ever go back to those. When you're dressing like this, it's easy to just take layers off and put them back on to stay at a comfortable temperature. For my layers, I like a thick overcoat, a thinner jacket like this micro houndstooth one from Hope Stockholm, and a graphic t-shirt like this one from Supreme, which makes me look like a STEM major who overshares his opinions on Twitter. I know I've kind of been avoiding sneakers for whatever reason, but they're an easy and comfortable way to dress down an outfit. On top of that, sneakers with pleated pants like these from Xenia is every day, but also exciting. Another way to layer similarly is wearing jeans. We all know that they go with everything, and I kept with muted colors in the rest of this fit like navy, brown, black, and white. Varying textures and fabrics is always fun when layering, so I've incorporated a 90s velour track jacket as the meat to my winter layering sandwich. A good band tee like this blondy tee from Marc Jacobs goes perfect under everything. And if you're going to use lots of layers, make sure that the outer layer is simple and matches with everything else in the fit. I wear this black overcoat that my grandma got me for Christmas last year with anything if I just need to add warmth to a previously fun look. And I realized too late that my collar was crumpled under the coat, so I apologize for the lack of serious professionalism here. If you've made it this far, I'm impressed because I probably would have clicked away already. But my last outfit is my greatest hack, and that is a white turtleneck. They go with anything that you can throw together, so I've just put it under a bunch of clothes I've already shown. White is super neutral and creates light academia vibes while remaining super cozy, and turtlenecks make anyone look put together. So if you're in a discussion section and you have a turtleneck on, people are just going to agree with what you say even if you never did the readings. Also, a tighter necklace with a turtleneck looks really clean. I haven't talked much about it, but minimal jewelry with minimal outfits looks really classic and chic. Try to keep all your jewelry the same material or color, and if you can match it with details in your outfit, even better. As much as I love dressing up, and winter is definitely the best time to layer up, like everybody else, I've really just been lounging around and living and watching Netflix and going to my Zoom classes in my most comfortable attire, like this L.L. Bean flannel that my grandma got me two years ago for Christmas. But I do hope this lookbook and these outfits provide some inspiration for you so you can be the most mysterious person at your local Trader Joe's on your weekly shopping trips. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment any suggestions you have for future videos. Peace.